Before European settlement and the introduction of cats and foxes, numbats had a wide range across the southern, central and western Australia. Now the population of the marsupial in the wild is estimated at less than a thousand. Some numbats from a captive breeding program have been introduced into feral-free habitats of the Australian Wildlife Conservancy in South Australia and New South Wales. Today another nine numbats have been translocated to an AWC sanctuary at Mount Gibson in Western Australia for the first time. Atticus Fleming is the CEO of the Australian Wildlife Conservancy. Thanks for joining us, Atticus. How did the numbats enjoy their new home today? <laughs> um, I'm told that they love their new home, so they've settled in very nicely. They've only been there for 24 hours, but um, that was after a long 11-hour trip across Australia, so it's a good start. And what, what sort of habitat do they like? Uh, it's a great question because... They've disappeared from so much of Australia that what we see now is only a snapshot of the habitat that they may have liked. The critical thing for numbats is termites. So every numbat eats around 20,000 termites a day. So they need to be in habitat where there are termites. And the other thing they need is uh, they need cover. So before cats and foxes arrived, they needed cover from native predators, being either quolls or raptors. With foxes and cats, of course, the need for cover increases dramatically because they are such good hunters. Um, but uh, these numbats, these nine numbats that made the trip across Australia on, on Sunday, they came from Scotia, which is our property in western New South Wales. And at Scotia, we've created the largest cat-free area on mainland Australia. So we have a population of 160-odd wild numbats there at Scotia. That's nearly 20% of the entire population of numbats. We've taken nine of those wild numbats and, as I've said, they've flown right across Australia and been deposited at Mount Gibson. Mount Gibson, so Scotia is the largest cat-free area on mainland Australia. At Mount Gibson, we've established the second largest cat-free area on mainland Australia. Uh, and Mount Gibson, <clears throat> as I said, they've settled in nicely because it is a really beautiful landscape salmon gum, york gum, these beautiful eucalypt woodlands uh, with a lovely understory, lots of termites. I mean, it's paradise for a number, really, because there are no cats. Given that they are so rare, it's a fair bet few Australians have ever seen one. What are they like and what's their temperament like? Uh, well, they are beautiful. Uh, many Australians will only have seen them because they are the faunal emblem of Western Australia, so they get a little bit of publicity by virtue of that fact. But um, they've been called like a native banded and anteater in the past because they are very small, they've got beautiful stripes, um, actually hard to describe, but um, uh, few Australians see them. Uh, but like so many of our native animals, they are just a, a, a very beautiful, uh, beautiful animal, beautiful coats. Um, yeah, so sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to paint you a picture. <laughs> You've done pretty well, actually, for something that is so difficult to describe. And how, how much further do you see this program going? What sort of numbers would you like to see them get back up to? And are you still looking for other areas that are feral-free to, to make new populations of numbats? We're certainly looking for additional areas. Uh, and the critical thing is, as you say, they need to be feral-free. So, you know, the numbat population that we now have across Australia, a thousand animals, is a tiny, tiny fraction of what was here at the time of European settlement. So uh, we now have three populations. We're, in fact, aiming to establish two new populations, feral predator-free areas in New South Wales national parks over the next few years, doing that in combination with the New South Wales government. And with the Western Australian government working on some other areas in, in Western Australia and across the country. So um, I think the interesting thing for your listeners, I guess, is these feral predator-free areas, um, the numbats are one of the few animals that come out during the day, the few native animals that come out during the day. Many of our other uh, native mammals only come out at night. So when you go into one of these feral-free areas, you're basically going back in time because as the sun sets all of these native animals come out and you're actually seeing the bush alive with small mammals. That's what the early European settlers saw and obviously what Indigenous Australians were accustomed to 
that's now gone from most of the continent. So it's a tragic tale. And putting the numbat back into some of these places is just part of this bigger story of trying to restore the Australian bush. Well, it sounds like a great project to be part of. Atticus, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thank you.